Hey everybody, it's Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, and I'm going to do a late October update to tell you how the Fab Five is doing, as well as telling you what's going on with the three new girls, and we've also picked out names for them, so stick around. Really super fast, I wanted to show you the Fab Five. They're doing great, all the plants are doing great. And it looks like most of the flock is getting over the worst of the molt as far as when they were dropping their feathers. And you guys are so sweet, excuse me, to be asking about Calypso, my alpha hen, who has just acted kind of under the weather for a while. So I did end up using Ivermax, which is an Ivermectin pour on. And I don't like to worm preventatively a lot because it can end up creating more problems. It can make parasites more resistant to medication, but she just wasn't feeling really great. She's the all black one who's in the center of your shot. <laughs> she has never, she's three and a half and she's never had a bad molt in her entire life. She's always had a very light molt, if any at all. And I don't know how well you can see her, but this is what she looks like as of yesterday. Oh, you hear the new girls. That's the new girls. So you can see she's got that whole bald spot there and then she has like one tail feather. So she has, I mean, look at this. I've cleaned feathers twice and it just looks like, you know, they had a pillow fight out here. Chick, 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 chick. Come on, chick, chick. So really quick, I wanted to show you these girls. So that explains why she's not feeling super amazing. But she's doing okay. She's eating and drinking. Nobody's really laying eggs right now. We had a really late um, heat wave here. So... Um, just a really, really quick reminder, if your birds are molting extra protein snacks like dry cat food or sunflower seeds, fly grubs, mealworms, stuff like that will help them recover more quickly. And then you don't want to hold your chickens if possible because as you can see, those pin feathers growing back in, that's really uncomfortable. So you don't want to be picking up your birds and holding them and stuff like that unless you absolutely have to. I am going to do a video before too long about a medical check of what I do and how I check my girls late at night and just kind of show you the things that I look for, the things I check. Get it, Grace? Get them. But here's the girls right here. They're doing okay. So now let's walk over and see the new trio. So here we are with our new girls. Chick, 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 chick. So they've been here almost a week and We've had some challenges, so let me just go into everything. As far as Bumblefoot, their cases are not that bad, so I'm going to let them just be here in the clean pine for a week and see how they do, and then if I need to treat them once we get moved, then I'm going to do that. Hi, girls. Chick, chick, chick. We brought them last Sunday, and which was October 18, and by that Tuesday, we were, or maybe even Monday, we were getting eggs from them. So we're getting two eggs a day. Some of them have been soft shelled, but that's okay. That just means they need some supplementation. So we're helping with that. Hi girls. What is it? What is it? Tick, 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 tick. So we've had a lot of issues with them being crated over here. It's, um, it's actually been very stressful for me. So we have, they have their own water bucket over here with the drinkers so that they'll get used to the kinds of drinkers that they'll have when they're in the full coop. But unfortunately, the drinker that we had installed was faulty. And so we had this stupid five gallon bucket leak all over their crate. And so that was really stressful. You, of course, you don't want your chickens to be without food or water. Even for a couple of hours, it can start to do, um, it could start to create health problems. And for sure, you won't get eggs for a few days if they're without food or water. So that was really stressful for me. And like I said, they're, they're in the shade over here constantly, but we've had a heat wave where we've been in the mid to high 80s, which for the end of October is just crazy. So, but they are roosting at night. I'm literally coming out and checking on them every couple of hours. We've been holding them every day. I had to clip a couple of their nails. Here, let me get back down. I had to clip a couple of their nails. Tick, 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 tick. But, hi, baby. But they're just bright-eyed and, hi, girls. What do you see? Now, the new challenge that we have had, if you look over there right past the bucket, there's a clear Tupperware container. I had it originally bolted here on the side of the crate. There is some animal around here, um, I'm guessing mice or rats, that's living, you know, somewhere in the vicinity that is stealing all of the chicken food. 
and we are giving them supplements and extra things every day. They're getting dry cat food and sunflower seeds and they're getting all of the treats that the other chickens are getting. Even though these girls are younger and they're not molting right now. So they may molt this winter, we'll have to see, because they're just now, you know, they're, they're just now about ready to hit a year old. Right, girls? What is it? Chick, 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 chick. But they're not afraid of my kids, they're not afraid of the dogs. So that's good. I haven't had any issues with my dog trying to come over here, except I think she caught, you know, the she saw the mice or the rats or whatever it was over here. So I'm experimenting now with figuring out what the heck I'm going to do with their food because obviously I don't want to be paying to be feeding some rodents out here. But I've moved the cup all around and it, it so far it hasn't mattered. I can't really get hardware cloth to put around this whole area, but the girls are going to be over here for at least another week or two. So we've got to figure something out. So that's the new challenge. And of course, everything that you've been waiting for. So the gray hen right here in the front, she's gray and brown. She's a sapphire gem. Her name's going to be Miss Muffet, right? Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet laying her daily egg. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and she ate it. <laughs> That's the rhyme that my kids and I came up with. So we were thinking of a whole bunch of different names for her. We were thinking of Hedwig and we were thinking of Fluff and Puff and a whole bunch of names. But then we decided on Miss Muffet. This girl here, chick, 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 chick. She's a French black copper marin hen, and she does have the feathered feet. And she is going to be named Talaria, which I know sounds like a ridiculous name. <laughs> but because she has the feathered feet, we started looking, and there was, there was a Greek god named Hermes, who's the one who had the special shoes made by the gods that had the wings on them, and so he could run as fast as a bird could fly. And so we're going to name her Tally to be like Talaria, like the special wings that were on Hermes's holy shoes, right? And then our two black chickens will be named Tally and Callie. So that works out well. And then this girl here, the little Easter egger, she's also the most chill, this one right here. Tick, 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 tick. And she's our little Easter egger. And we were thinking about different names for her. We liked um, Lucky Ducky because when we brought her here, she was making little clucks, but they almost sounded like a duck, like a little squeaky duck. But then we decided the kids have fallen in love with um, Carmen San Diego, and so they wanted to name, they want to name her Carmen Hen Diego. <laughs> so we've got Miss Muffet, Carmen Hen Diego, and Tally over there. So right now we are you know just handling them every day, keeping an eye on them, cleaning the crate every day. They are roosting on that stick at night, which is really cute. And we're getting eggs from them, which is a really good sign, right? It means that they're happy, that they're healthy, that they're not overly stressed. So we're going to continue to give them calcium and stuff to keep those eggshells really strong. But we're getting a cold front in tomorrow, and then we won't have any more warm days until the girls are put in with the rest of the flock. So we are quarantining them for a minimum of two weeks. So I, I really need to have them integrated by early, mid-November, if possible. So we'll see. Tick, 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 tick. But it's really nice to have a chocolate egg in my little kitchen egg holder, my little egg carousel. Tick, tick, tick. It's nice to give them little treats. They got to try fresh zucchini yesterday and they just loved it. Right, girls? So we're gonna go fill up their food. We're gonna try a different strategy, but you guys let me know what you think. And I hope you love the new girls. And then I'll be doing some videos soon about how to not hold a chicken because you can accidentally kill a bird. I'll be doing some videos, um, like I said, doing a medical check. It's okay, Miss Muffet. It's okay, Chick Chick. And then I'll be giving you, hopefully, another update on these girls with all good news here in another week or so.